Okay, today I want to talk about React Hooks. Now this was something that was introduced following the last bunch of videos that I did on React, that which was quite a while back. Um, so version 16, 15, 16, when you were building your components in React, they used classes. Version 17 uses functions as the default. Now you can still use the classes to build your components, but Hooks has made it a little bit easier to use functions because now we have access to state from the functions. Classes always had access to the state data, but functions didn't. Now they do with Hooks. So we're going to look at what that is, what Hooks are, and I'm going to show you the use state and use effect Hooks. Now those are just a couple of the ones that are available. Um, from the documentation itself, these are the basic hooks right here. I'm going to talk about use state and use effect. Use context, I'm going to use that, do that in a separate one, separate video along with use reducer. We'll talk about how to use the context API with that. All right, so let's dive into this and see what we've got. Now I used npx create react app hooks one to create this which by default gave me the function version, which looks like this. So there is a function and it returns the object, which is my page. Okay, nothing <clears throat> really new or confusing there. The old version I have right here, this is what the old version would have built. So it would have had the import react component, um, class extends component, it's got the render method and it's returning effectively the same thing. I just changed the word uh, class and function in these two things. This is the one that we're using right now. I want to do a very quick review of this. Uh, you can see here I'm importing both versions of app. One's commented out, so I'm going to do the class one first. We'll talk about how state works and then we'll jump over to the other one with the functions. So inside here I'm going to put a bunch of code in inside my component. This is what we would normally be doing with the classes. So we have a constructor. This is one of the lifecycle methods. We've got component did mount, component did update, uh, component did mount. This is after the initial load. If you want to do things on the page, like change the value of state or something like that, you can do it inside of here um, on the after the initial load. Component did update. This is after every update. You want to make a change there. Um, or sorry, with the side effects, more things like um, if you want to do a fetch call, if you want to make a call to a timer, start a timer running, uh, even console logs, that is a side effect. It's not something that is changing state. It's something that is happening beyond state. Then down in my page, to be able to use these, my handle click, so just as an example, I'm going to add an on click. There it is. And inside my paragraph, I'm going to use the value that I've got created in state. So my state initial value, I set it inside the constructor. It's an object. I've got a couple of properties, one called hungry, one called num. And I'm just going to be working with this hungry value for now. So this.state.hungry is going to give me the value false. And that's what I'm going to use down here. I'm going to inject some code. I'm going to say this.state.hungry. So if that is true, then what I want to output is I want to write out really. And if it's false, I'm going to write out not. So I'll save that, go back to our page. Okay, there we go, we're mounted. So that means the initial load has taken place. That false value that we set initially up here, so hungry is false right here in our constructor, that's being used to write out not right here. And when we click, you can see that we are changing the page. The value of state's changing between really and not. We're clicking. Every time we click, we're changing state. So it is doing the update and it is recalling that render method to update this paragraph. All right, so that's what we're doing here. We have these lifecycle methods and all the changes to state which is the information about our page. One of the key things about state, when you should use state, well, if it's something that you're going to be rendering, it's 
data, its state, its information about the current state of your page. Maybe it's the current URL. Maybe it's the list of items on a page. Maybe it's just one word embedded inside of some HTML. But things on the page that could change. That's what state really should be tied to. OK, so that's state. That's what we were doing before. Now, how has this changed? So we want to replicate this same behavior, but with hooks. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to comment that one out. I'm going to uncomment my basic app. If I refresh this now, there we are. So nothing written here before the word hungry. We're on the function page. So we'll jump into this one. This is just a basic function. It's not tied to React and component necessarily. It's not going to go and look for state. It's not using state right now. But the idea behind state was it's just information that we're putting on the page, right? So if I was to create a variable like this, hungry. OK, that's the variable I want to use. I'm going to use it down here, do the same thing that we were doing before. I'm going to look at the value of hungry. And if it's true, I'm going to write really. If it's false, I'm going to write not in quotation marks. Okay, save it, come back, there. Okay, great. I can add a click listener. So we can say on click equals, and I'm going to create a function called handle click. I'm not saying this, I'm not using this, it's not a class. So inside of here, I'm going to create a function called handle click. Inside of here, I'm going to change the value of hungry. So I'm going to say hungry is equal to just the reverse. And then we'll console log just to see that this is working. I want to write out the current value of hungry. And we can see down in the console, we are toggling back and forth. But nothing's changing here which really is what you would expect. If you've got a variable and you're changing the value of the variable, there's nothing that says, hey, recall this, return the value from the function again and re-render the page. We're not doing that anywhere. And that's where hooks come in. Hooks let us turn things like this, a variable with a value, which really is all the state is. It's an object with some properties. If you just got a, a couple of values like hungry and num, we're going to take those and we're going to turn them into state things. So instead of this, I'm just going to comment this one out. And we will now, I'm going to create an array and I'm going to use this method right here, use state. Now I'm going to have to import that to be able to use it. So we'll say import and I want use state from React. There. Don't have to bring a component or anything. I'm just this one method from React. I want to use that. I've brought it in. So what goes in this array? There's two things that come back from use state. One, hey, what's the variable that you want to use to hold this value that you're now considering part of state? Well, it's going to be called hungry. And if you want to change hungry, what's the function that you want to call to do that? Well, I'm going to say set hungry. There. That's it. That's all we have to do here. This is the function that I'm going to use to update the value of this. Use state gives me these two things. And all it wants is what's the initial value that I want to use for here. Simple enough. So false is the initial value. So I'll save that. Compile with warnings. I'm, yeah, I'm not using everything, but that's okay. We're not ready yet. <laughs> um, oh yeah, we're not using our method. So this set hungry instead of doing this now, because now hungry is part of state. It's actually a state variable. So I am going to inside of handle click, I'm going to call set hungry and I'm going to pass this, the inverse 
whatever Hungary is. I'm going to flip the sign, and that's what I'm going to pass in here. So that's what we're going to get on our page. Let's refresh this. Not Hungary, that's our default false. And there it is. It's working. It's doing the exact same thing as it was before, but all I had to do was call the method that they gave me by calling set state. There's my initial state. There's the variable that I'm going to use to refer to it. And this is the function where I'm going to pass in whatever the new value is. Now I could have hard coded a value in here. Um, even like set state, we can also spell it correctly here. We can use a function in here, same as we did before. Um, and this function can return whatever value we want. So if we did that, so hungry is being passed in and we're doing the reverse of hungry, or we're just calling it, we're not even using the value being passed in, we're just taking hungry, which is just a variable here, we're flipping the sign, does the same sort of thing. Okay, so that is use state. Just lets us change the value. All right, now in this other example, I didn't do any functions with it, but there was another value in here. This was an object that had multiple properties. What if we want to do that with state? Well, if you want to do that here, what we're going to say is, I'm going to have another property called num. I'm going to have a function that I call when I want to change it. And here's its default value. So I'm not using it yet, so I'll get some warnings, but num and set num. This is the value, the variable that's going to hold the value. And this is the function to call if you want to update it. So down here, if I wanted to repeat what I was doing and have a function that I call, let's say change num is what I'm going to call it. So this is just going to be a function up in here, let change num, here's my function nested inside of my app, and inside here I will call set num. And what value do I want? Well, I'm going to take num and I'm going to add one to it. There we go. And this could be an expression or it can be a function like I was doing here. So let's do the other one. I, I had the um, just the value here for the first one. Here, let's say this is num, and I'm going to take num plus one. There we go, that's the return value. So this is toggling hungry, and this is changing num, but I need to write that out somewhere. Uh, let's see, well, we can put it in here for now. Now, this is a side effect. I shouldn't be doing this. Hungry works, and there's num. So I'm updating num. And the reason it started at six was because I had clicked it a bunch of times before I had refreshed the page. So it had already updated state to be the value five. So then when I clicked again, it was six, seven, eight. Now, side effects. Like I said, anytime that you want to do something that doesn't have to do specifically with changing a value of something that is state on the page, if I want to do something beyond that, call a fetch, do a timer, uh, affect something on the DOM that's not tied directly to state, that is considered to be a side effect. So how do we do that? Well, we bring in use effect. This is another function that we get from React that allows us to do side effects. And ties that, we call this when state has been changed. And just like here, we've got multiple functions to call, one function for each value, we can put as many of these use effect calls on the page as we want. So here's a use effect, and there's going to be a function that I call. And then the second parameter is when do you want to call it? What is the dependency that's going to make this thing run? If I said num, that means this function runs when num is changed. 
doesn't care about whether or not Hungary was changed, just numb. So I'm going to take this out of here, put it down inside of here. We'll get rid of the console log in that one as well. There, now I have a side effect that's going to run when num gets updated. So every time num gets changed, this console log happens. Hungry? Doesn't happen. There's no console logs for Hungry being changed. Clear this out. Okay, so the page is re-rendering when I change the value of Hungry. When I click on this, num is being changed, and it is updating the value. Great, so that's working. This is running. If I change this to Hungry, now it's going to run that function every time Hungry gets changed, which is kind of an odd thing, and that's why I'm getting the warning here. It's saying, hey, you're talking about num, but you're not using it as a dependency. That's fine. I'm just using it to demonstrate. Okay, I'm clicking on here. I'm changing num, but I'm not displaying it. The use effect is only listening for changes to Hungry. Click on that. There we go. There's the 28. So num was changed, but we only see it when I change Hungry. Not something you'd normally do, just to demonstrate the point. So I've got one for num. I can make another one to do for hungry. When hungry changes, what do you want to do? Well, I've got stuff happening in the page. When I change hungry, that's driving a re-render of this, this thing right here. But I also want to change something not inside this component, so it's a side effect. Let's change the page title. So we can say document.title is equal to, I'll just put a random number up there. Math.random, and let's, let's make it base 16, just to make it interesting. Okay, so now, when I change hungry, it should re-render this, and it should also update the title on my tab. Well, there's the title on my tab. When I click on this, each time I click, I'm changing it here, the re-render, and it's also changing the value up here. All right, great. So that is an effect. That is a side effect that we are making take place every time we change hungry. Side effect every time num changes. If you want to do both, we can do that as well. We can say, every time hungry or num change, I want to run this. So num is going to do this and this, changing that value. So I'll clear this out again. Here we go. So I'm clicking on the paragraph. Num's being updated. I'm seeing the console log. And up here, this is also changing at the same time. All right, so those are just two of the hooks that we get that allow us to work with state. And they are React hooks. So I hope that uh, helps you get started working with hooks. There's some really cool stuff that you can do with them. Uh, and it really does start to compress your code. It's a little bit less code. And it lets you start to break things apart into separate components. The more and more you work with hooks, the more you can really encapsulate your code so uh, it can be moved around without breaking things uh, by breaking use effect and the changing functions into separate parts um, makes it easier to work with with use effect being tied directly to individual properties it means your code is a lot more pure it's a lot more focused on hey when this one thing happens this is what i want to do i don't want to do this for every change in state just some of the changes in state all right so hope that helps you if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. I will be doing some more videos, hopefully in the very near future, about other hooks that we have in React. Um, if you look down in the description, you'll find a link to the uh, GitHub repo that has all of the code in this finished state. All right. And as always, thanks for watching.